Um, so this is uh, how I want the students to approach hand infections. Um, this gentleman had a small penetrating injury, which has now become uh, increasingly painful and swollen. So that's the history. Um, you need to know about the patient as well. Does he have any comorbidities? How long has it been going, etc. But I just want to focus on the examination of this patient. Um, so um, the first thing you want to do is look, and, and when you look, you can see an obvious uh, swelling, uh, yellow discoloration over the mid aspect of the palm. If you turn him over, turn over, sir. Turn your hand over. You see, there's not much in the way of swelling. It's a little bit more swollen than the other side, but not a whole lot. It's definitely swollen, but this swelling is non-tender, um, and. Uh, uh, so it's really the discovery. You also notice the previous scar over there. This is an interesting case um, because it's uh, slightly atypical, but I'll get onto that in a second. Um, then, when you want to feel, so it's look, feel, move. When you want to feel, when you want to feel, you want to um, feel for local tenderness to identify where it's tender. Now, obviously, here, this is a very important sign. I don't know if, the, if you can see it on the video, but this is what we call fluctuance. So you can see if I push there, it bulges there, and if I push there, it bulges there. So this is fluctuance, and it goes in both planes. So it's bi-directional fluctuance, cross-fluctuance it's called. Um, so it's obviously tender and, uh, and swollen there, but there's also some tenderness over here. Um, when you open and close these fingers actively and passively, because that's the next thing you want to do is movement. So it's active movement, make a fist, open up, and then you want to do passive movement as well. Okay, and you want to ask him to move his thumb across the little finger. Can you bring your thumb across? He doesn't really like to move his thumb very much. So this could be a typical infection or an atypical infection. The learning point today is that there are five recognized hand infections. Number one, infection around the nail called a paronychia. Number two, infection of the pulp. It can be, it's mostly the terminal pulp, but can be the middle or the proximal pulp. That's called a felon or felon. Infection number three is a web space abscess. That's in there. And this guy's slightly tender and there's slight pushing apart of these fingers, which is the cardinal sign of a web space abscess, pushing apart of the fingers, splaying of the fingers. So this could be a, a going towards a, a web space abscess that's uh, presenting superficially more proximally. The fourth infection is a flexor sheath infection along the whole uh, flexor sheath. That's usually uh, a very uh, easier to identify infection because it's the whole finger swollen and tender. The patient doesn't want to move at all. And if you passively extend the finger, it's exquisitely painful. That's the fourth infection, flexor sheath infection. And then the fifth infection, which this might be as well, is the deep palm infection. So there's an infection underneath, deep to the flexor tendons, between the layer of the flexor tendons and the lumbricals, and then the interossei deeper down. And then that gets divided by a band in the mid aspect of the hand. It's a fibrous band, sept septa that goes down to the middle metacarpal, and you get a thinner sided and an ulnar sided deep mid palm infection. Now, this guy's slightly tender here, so this could be um, uh, that case. So, it's either an atypical subcutaneous infection from a laceration, or it's a deep mid palm infection, or it is a web based infection. So, the management of this patient will be number one, Adequate anesthesia, not analgesia, anesthesia. You can't be just lancing this thing and draining it. So you need a proper anesthetic, whether it's regional, general, or you can't really do local, but you might be able to get by with a wrist block here because it's uh, out of the zone of infection, number one. Number two is you need a bloodless field. So you'll need an above elbow tunique. Uh, elevate for two minutes to drain all the blood. Do not use an, a constricting Eschmark type bandage. Just elevate for two minutes uh, and then make it a bloodless field. And then once you've got an adequate anesthesia and a bloodless field, you will make a longitudinal incision and um, uh, drain the pus, take a pus while always, and then see where the infection is coming from. If it's coming from the web space, I would extend the incision towards the web space. If it's coming from the deep mid palm area, I would extend more proximally, uh, watching out for the very critical nerves, vessels, and tendons, and then go down deep to the tendons to drain the mid carpal space. And then uh, this patient will need... Uh, uh, appropriate antibiotics, uh, initially empiric, and then once the pus result comes back, the definitive antibiotics.